Our last speaker for this morning's uh, session on culture and psychosis is Kelly Anderson, who's currently a postdoctoral fellow at the Center for Addiction and Mental Health in Toronto. So thank you, Dr. Kermeyer. Good morning, everyone. Um, I, over the next 20 minutes or so, I'll be presenting findings from uh, three studies I've been involved at that look at racial and ethnic differences in pathways to care for first episode psychosis. Now, racial and ethnic differences in pathways to care have been well documented for chronic psychiatric conditions. And uh, the bulk of this literature has come out of the UK, although this has been looked at in other uh, contexts as well. This literature suggests that racial and ethnic minority groups tend to have more complex pathways to care. They tend to have an increased likelihood of involuntary admissions and a greater involvement of police and criminal justice agencies. However, relatively less research has been done that looks at the first episode of psychosis specifically. And the research that has been done has shown inconsistent findings. This has led some people to speculate that perhaps these racial and ethnic differences in pathways to care arise only after the first episode, once clients have had possibly negative interactions with services. So before I launch into the uh, bulk of this presentation, I just want to briefly describe, um, or sorry, briefly define the terms race and ethnicity. Uh, we use them often in day-to-day -day language, and you'll often see them used interchangeably in the literature. However, I will be distinguishing between the two of them in my presentation today. So race typically refers to uh, categorizing people because of their physical features, such as the color of their skin. So when we refer to a person as being black or white, we are referring to their race. An example of uh, how this may be relevant in the context of Pathways to Care is that a person's race may impact um, how their behavior is being perceived by service providers. The term ethnicity is used to describe the social group a person belongs to based on factors such as language, religion, and place of origin. So although people of African and Caribbean origin are both, would both fall into a black racial group, they come from uh, very different ethnic backgrounds. So an example of how ethnicity might be relevant in the context of Pathways to Care is that a person's ethnic background may influence their own beliefs about the causes of their symptoms of psychosis, as well as their decisions about what the most appropriate course of action might be uh, when these symptoms start to pose a problem. So, in this presentation, I will be uh, talking about findings from three studies I've been involved in looking at racial and ethnic differences in pathways to care. Uh, the first was from my dissertation research, which I did here at uh, PEP Montreal. Uh, the second are findings from two systematic reviews of the literature. And the third, um, I will be presenting some very preliminary findings from a study I'm involved in looking at ethnic differences in pathways to care in Ontario. So, as I said, I, I did my dissertation research here at PEP Montreal under the supervision of uh, Ashok Mala, as well as Dr. Rebecca Fuhr from Epidemiology. And the objective of my project was to describe the sociodemographic and clinical determinants of health service use surrounding a first episode of psychosis. I'm not going to go into all of the findings from, uh, from my dissertation, but one of the factors that we were interested in was a person's uh, racial or ethnic background. <clears throat> so for the study, we used a mixed methods, multi-level triangulation design. And what this uh, study design involves is looking at a particular research question from different levels. So we looked at this issue from the population level here in Montreal. We looked at it from the clinical level using data from PEP, and we uh, also looked at it at an individual level. So at the population level, we used an administrative database held by the Health and Social Services Agency here in Montreal. And this database consists primarily of data from physician billings and hospitalizations from our universal health insurance program. 
However, because this was an administrative database, we had very limited information available on socio-demographic characteristics, so we were unable to look at race or ethnicity specifically. However, we did observe some trends by factors that are known to co-vary with race and ethnicity. So we found that people who are living in the most materially deprived areas of Montreal had an increased risk of having a first episode of psychosis relative to those living in the least deprived areas. And as well, we found that people living in the most socially deprived areas of the city had uh, nearly twice the risk of having a first episode of psychosis. We did not, however, observe any differences in the patterns of health service use by either of these factors. So as Elsie already described, PEP uh, Montreal has an extensive database uh, that they collect when clients enter the program. So um, we, at the clinical level, we used uh, socio-demographic information as well as data on pathways to care uh, from this database. We were also interested in uh, whether or not clients were disengaging from PEP services. Um, so the PEP program runs typically for two years, and we were looking at the uh, likelihood of disengagement from PEP uh, prior to completing the two-year program. So unfortunately, there were very low numbers of uh, ethnic minority clients in the PEP database. We did lump these together by racial group, and the numbers are still quite low. There's less than 15% of our sample fall into any one of the ethnic minority or racial minority groups. Despite our low numbers, we did find some evidence that race may be playing a role in pathways to care here in Montreal. So we did find a trend towards black clients having an increased likelihood of referral by emergency services relative to white clients. We also found that Asian clients uh, had significantly fewer contacts on their pathway to care relative to white clients. Again, uh, this was not statistically significant, but we found that black clients had an increased likelihood of police or ambulance involvement on their pathway to care. And finally, we did find significant racial differences in the likelihood of service disengagement so uh, black clients uh, had a shorter time to disengagement relative to uh, white clients. So finally, uh, at the individual level, we conducted qualitative interviews with clients at the PET program to try and understand some of their experiences with Pathways to Care here in Montreal. And because of the uh, low numbers of racial and ethnic minority clients at the PET program, we were unable to do any sort of race or ethnicity-based analysis. And we didn't specifically ask about this issue in the interviews. Um, however, it was spontaneously mentioned by a number of different uh, people. So this is one example of a quote from the interviews. This woman was talking about experiencing the symptoms of psychosis and not knowing what to do or who, who to turn to. And she says, especially us, in fact, we come from Africa. We haven't lived in this system like you. We don't necessarily know that there are people there who are even paid for, uh, by the government for this. So although the evidence was limited, we did find uh, some suggestion that perhaps race is playing a role in people's pathways to care here in Montreal. However, uh, we did have significant limitations to the data that were available to us, as well as no lo low numbers of racial minority clients. And this really prevented us from doing a detailed assessment of the role that race or ethnicity plays. So after completing my dissertation, I had the opportunity to uh, take up a postdoctoral fellowship at the Center for Addiction and Mental Health, uh, looking at this issue. And uh, upon taking up this position, I started out uh, conducting two systematic reviews of the literature. So the first systematic review focused on uh, racial and ethnic differences in pathways to care in first episode psychosis, and the second looked at racial and ethnic differences in duration of untreated psychosis, or the DUP. So for the review on pathways to care, uh, I identified seven studies that looked at pathways to care of racial or ethnic minority groups relative to the majority population. And across these seven studies, uh, the, a wide variety of different indicators or measures of the pathways to care were used. So we chose to focus on three, 
uh, that were most commonly used and as well that we uh, felt were the most important in terms of influencing the pathways to care as well as um, having potential consequences for subsequent engagement with services. So these included uh, whether there was GP involvement, whether there was police involvement, and whether or not a person had an involuntary admission. So only two of the studies included in our review actually looked at specific ethnic groups. Most of the uh, studies combined them into racial groups. And these two studies did not show any differences between specific ethnic groups. So for example, there was no difference between African or Caribbean groups. So we pooled the data from these two studies and lumped them by a racial group to allow us to compare across all of the studies in the literature. So these are the findings for the studies that looked at black racial groups relative to white. Uh, the top half of the forest plot shows, shows the black groups. And the outcome was whether or not there was GP involvement on the pathway to care. As you can see, most of the individual studies did not find evidence of racial differences in the likelihood of GP involvement. However, when the data are, sum are pooled across the different studies, we see that black clients are significantly less likely to have GP involvement on their pathway to care relative to white clients. The forest plot on the bottom shows findings for Asian groups relative to white. Again, the individual studies show few differences um, across the, uh, sorry, for Asian groups relative to white. And when we pool the data, um, there's a trend towards Asian groups having a greater likelihood of GP involvement on the pathway to care. However, this did not uh, reach statistical significance. Again, probably um, because of the low numbers of Asian clients that were uh, included in these five studies. When we look at the findings for police involvement on the pathway to care, again, the individual studies, uh, some showed significant differences, others did not. Um, for black groups versus white, when we pool the data, we see that black clients had nearly more than twice the likelihood of police involvement on the pathway to care relative to white clients. And on the bottom half of the forest plot, we see that Asian groups uh, had a similar likelihood of police involvement relative to white clients. And finally, the third indicator that we looked at was involuntary admission, and five studies presented data on this. However, three of the five studies showed that there was an interaction occurring between the likelihood of involuntary admission and a person's age, gender, and socioeconomic status. So because of this interaction, we were unable to meta-analyze the data. Um, I will say that one of the studies found that Asian clients were less likely to have an involuntary admission and uh, two studies found that both black Caribbean and black African clients were more likely to have an involuntary admission. So moving on to the systematic review on the duration of untreated psychosis, we found 11 studies that looked at racial or ethnic differences in DUP. And of those 11 studies, only three reported significant differences between groups. These three studies suggested that Black patients generally and black, patient, black African patients specifically have a shorter DUP than white groups. And this may come as a surprise to most people because I think it is often assumed that ethnic minority groups will have a longer DUP relative to the majority population. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the forest plots from these uh, studies. We were unable to meta-analyze the findings. Uh, or the data, mostly because the different studies used uh, very different definitions of the duration of untreated psychosis. I just wanted to draw your attention to the uh, findings from the ASOP study out of the UK by Craig Morgan and colleagues. And this study found that black Caribbean clients actually have a longer DUP relative to their white British clients whereas the black African clients had a shorter DUP relative to the white British clients. So you can imagine that if we were to pool the data for these two different ethnic groups into one overall black racial group, we're going to miss this important distinction between the two groups, which may have been what happened in the four studies at the top of the forest plot 
uh, that actually look at black racial groups as opposed to um, different ethnic minority groups. So from these uh, systematic reviews, we concluded that prior studies were limited by small sample sizes in the racial and ethnic minority groups. And as well, the included studies typically assessed racial differences in pathways to care or DUP with little consideration of ethnicity or immigration status. And uh, this may have obscured um, some between group differences that, that could have been observed. So finally, um, I will present some uh, very preliminary findings from a study I'm involved in um, at CAM, it's coming out of CAMH. This study is uh, looking at pathways to first episode care for psychosis in three ethnic groups, and uh, the PI on this project is Dr. Kwame McKenzie. The objective of this study is to look at pathways to care for clients of African, Caribbean, and European origin. And we just finished recruitment for this study last month, so these, uh, these findings are hot off the press. A second objective of this project is to try and understand why different pathways to care are taken by these different ethnic groups. So we currently have focus groups underway um, that are divided by the three ethnic groups to try and understand some of these differences. So we managed to recruit 167 clients into our study over the two-year period. The top half in purple show the um, European group divided by immigration status. And as you can see, there's about a two to one ratio of um, European clients relative to either black African or black Caribbean. We're starting to see that um, black African as well as black Caribbean clients have a fewer number of contacts on the pathway to care relative to the white European group. This finding is statistically significant for the black Caribbean group only, um, although the trend for the black African group is similar. So um, it may just be due to our limited sample that we're not seeing a significant difference there. We are seeing differences in ethnic groups um, for the likelihood of GP involvement on the pathway to care. The black Caribbean uh, clients were much less likely to have GP involvement on their pathway to care. However, uh, the numbers for the black African group look similar to the European group. In contrast to what's been reported previously, we're not seeing any ethnic differences in the likelihood of police involvement on the pathway to care. Um, across all three groups, more than half of clients had some form of police involvement um, in terms, uh, with respect to getting into services. And finally, we uh, did not observe a significant difference in the duration of untreated psychosis across the three groups. Uh, however, if you look at the median DUP, you'll see that the uh, DUP for the Black Caribbean group is, is more than twice as high as the D median DUP for the European group. So it may just be that we don't have the power in our data in order to show a significant difference. But these findings are similar to what was reported uh, in the UK. So just a few take home messages from, uh, from this presentation. Um, I have oversimplified the distinction between race, race and ethnicity uh, for the purposes of this discussion, but they are both extremely con complex constructs, and in reality, they likely overlap. And because they're very complex, their interactions with the pathway to care are also likely to be complex. So it's going to take a, a, a lot of effort to try and, and uh, figure out what's going on. However, um, I think there is data to suggest that racial and ethnic differences are present at the first episode of psychosis. And going forward, we need to try and tease apart the relative contributions of race, ethnicity, culture, and immigration status. I think that all of these factors do play a role in, in shaping a person's pathway to care, and the challenge is going to be trying to tease apart um, how all of these factors play a role. So obviously there were a lot of people involved across these three projects. I just want to acknowledge uh, Dr. Mala and, and my super, other co-supervisor, Dr. Fuhr, here in Montreal, as well as the PET program. The systematic review uh, involved 
Dr. Kwame McKenzie and Nina Flora at CAMH, and Dr. Suzanne Archie from McMaster, as well as Craig Morgan from the Institute of Psychiatry, and the um, investigative team for the Pathways to Care study in Toronto. There's a very large number of people across uh, several institu institutions. So thank you very much for your attention this morning. So again, we have time just for one question or comment. Anyone? Please. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so the question is uh, whether or not the DUP for ethnic minority groups is shorter because of the fact that they're more likely to be brought in by police or ambulance. And there is some evidence uh, to suggest that this is the case. Um, there was one study out of the UK not looking at the first episode specifically, but looking at um, chronic uh, pa patients with chronic uh, psychosis. And it found that um, black Caribbean patients had a longer overall DUP, but when you look at the help-seeking component of delay, they waited longer on the pathway to care to seek help, and then by that time were very ill and ended up um, having this very rapid progression into services usually involving emergency departments or police. Okay, by way of... Oh, You know, I think, Kelly, uh, not only in this study, in several studies, it, it appears that if you go through the primary health care route, uh, go through the GPs, it delays treatment. However, I think at the same time, going through the other route is probably a lot more traumatic. You know, the police, the emergency, and so on. So what has, ha I think, happened is that we have got into an epidemic of DUP, uh, that we have oversimplified this, that somehow longer DUP is bad, shorter DU, uh, DUP is good. It's, unfortunately, it is a lot more complex than that. There may be a, a delay of a few weeks, but with a softer landing might be much better than a shorter DUP with a hard bang thrown into the, the emergency department. So, uh, the, my only question is, how are you measuring DUP in Toronto? Uh, DUP, uh, we measured using the PPHS, the Personal and Psychiatric History Scale, I believe it is called, uh, for co to allow comparison with the studies that were done in the UK, which most, mostly use the PPHS. But unfortunately, we don't have the ability to break it down into uh, help-seeking delay and referral delay as, as is uh, possible with the CORE's instrument at PEP. Great. At the, the, I, we really don't, you want to take another one? Okay. Uh, thanks. Just. A very specific question. Did you include a, a people from Haiti, Asian, in your uh, black, uh, black Caribbean group? And I was wondering, like, when I read all those studies about black Caribbean, I, I always wonder, because in the eastern part of Montreal, we have mostly Asians, and I always wonder if we, I can apply those conclusions to, this, uh, to that population. Sorry, what was the first part? Did I include people from? From a Haitians. Oh, Haitians. In the Montreal sample? Montreal or Toronto. In Montreal, it was uh, divided by race, so it was much more cr crude than, um, than that. I don't know, maybe Elsie can, she was the one that was involved in categorizing by ethnicity. I don't know, how did you yeah. group those? Yeah, the people from AC and the Afro-Caribbean group. That is, of course, also 
parasite, you can, that's very, yeah, some, some are a bit doubtful, but yeah, that's how we would classify it. So just to say that this points to the importance of trying to collect meaningful data on people's ethnicity and uh, background because without that we can't do the more fine-grained analysis of the type that you've seen and may obscure important differences and then cannot address these inequalities which nevertheless persist. So I think that's one of the take-home lessons from seeing this kind of uh, progression and research that's going on here which is very exciting indeed. Um, and I get one last comment just to say that uh, since DSM-5 was just launched uh, a week or two ago, one of the few uh, unequivocally positive things in DSM-5 is the development of a cultural formulation interview, which is an opportunity to really situate people's mental health problems in their local social world and their community. And I think hopefully we're going to see a new generation of research that works with that kind of uh, contextual information. So thank you all very much. We have a 10-minute break now, and then uh, reconvene.